The next concept that I wanted to leave you with is the concept of collections and collection sets. Now we talk about this in the First Shot School class of Lightroom collections a lot more in detail, but this is something that I think that if there's one nugget that I want you to have, it's this one. Here we have a series of different pictures of my daughter Sabine, and I always just use her because I think that the concept is very simple. I don't want to get too involved in the overall pictures of this. I want to get involved in teaching how to be able to use Lightroom. Now, I have some pictures of Sabine here, right? So she's sitting there or there, and she's sitting over here, and if you look up at the top, she's kind of right here on a Dumbo ride. So there's a bunch of different pictures of her that I have that's set up right inside of my Lightroom. So I'd like to be able to have the best of these pictures. And if you notice, I'm gonna do a right click right here and go to the folder in library, and there's one called Jen Dumbo Ride. There's Sabine at the farm, a bunch of pictures at the farm, Sabine in Christmas trees, right? So that's a Christmas tree shot. Here we have Sabine eating soup. We did that one in the previous one. Here's her reading. So what I want to do is I wanna get the best of those pictures inside of one spot. If you're used to iTunes or Spotify, it's pretty much the exact same thing, right? You get one song in iTunes, and if you want to use it in multiple playlists, you can just create different types of playlists, and you can add that song into it. Pictures are no different than that. So the concept of a collection will let you do a bunch of different things with this, and primarily one of the best ones that it does is it lets you organize your images so that you can see the best of inside of one spot. Now, I want to grab a couple of different pictures from here, so I'm going to click on the plus sign, I'm going to create a collection, and I'm going to call this Best of Sabine. So instead of here, I'm just going to grab that, drag that in. I'm going to drag this one in. I'm going to grab this one over here, and I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to grab one more, and let's just say this one, right? Now, I have Best of Sabine right here, and I have these four pictures of her right there. Now, what if I wanted pictures of Sabine during Christmas, right? I can come over here and I can click on Create Collection and I can call this uh, Christmas Memories, right? Now, I can get pictures from anywhere, right, inside of my library. But let's just say that this was one of the pictures that I wanted here, so bring it into Christmas Memories. If I wanted to make one more and call this Goofy Moments, I could scroll through all of this stuff and really find that picture and go, well, that is kind of a goofy moment that I want to kind of keep. I'll grab that and drag that in there. So now, if you look, I have this picture in three different locations, right? This picture is in my Best of Sabine, this picture is in my Christmas Memories, and this picture is in my Goofy Moments, right? So those playlists are referring to the same file, but it's still only one file. The benefit of this is if you grab this file and you go into the develop module and inside of here you make a change of this, let's say we make it darker, not only is that file changed inside of the Goofy Moments section, but it's also changed in the Christmas Memories, it's also changed in the Best of Sabine. That is an immediate benefit of having this. So I tend to use a lot of collections to be able to save the best of and leverage the power of the fact that if you make changes inside of one spot, it's automatically going to cascade it to all of the other collections that have it. I also make sure that I create collections for almost everything that I want, right? So let's just go Sabine crazy for a second to explain how things can get a little crazier with this. Now, imagine if all of a sudden, inside of my folders here, I have Sabine at the farm, Sabine Christmas tree, Sabine eating soup, Sabine reading on the shelf. I'm gonna give you a quick tip that a lot of people don't know right now. Right click right here, and make sure that you have solo mode turned off. Now, from here, I'm gonna twirl up catalog. I'm gonna make sure that I could see collections. You could single click and shift click a series of folders and just drag them down into the collection section. And that can automatically create collections of those folders. So look, Sabine at the farm, Sabine Christmas tree, Sabine eating soup, Sabine reading shelf. Easy, right? We've taken folders and we've turned them into collections, and now it's a little bit better. But the pro this still sucks, right? Because if you go Sabine crazy, right? if you go job crazy, I'm all always going to have Sabine, 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 Sabine eating soup, Sabine Christmas tree, Sabine reading shelf, uh, model shoot, uh, Christmas memory, and then Sabine, 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 Sabine. 
that would just make it really hard to sort up and down, even though now the new Lightroom has a filter collection, it's still a pain in the butt. So if you're looking through all of these different collections, you say to yourself, well, there are some things that these things have in common, right? What do all of the Sabine things have in common? Well, they're all Sabine, my daughter. So what if I could take collections and organize them into a way that makes hierarchical sense? And that's where collection sets come in. They let you take collections and put them into a way that makes sense. So for me, I'm gonna come over here, click on the drop down. I'm gonna select create collection set. And I'm gonna call this Sabine images. Notice that this looks a little different now, right? So this just says Sabine images right here. Now I can single click on this collection. I can shift click on the lowest part of that collection and drag those inside of here. Now, anytime that I wanna see the Sabine images, I could just twirl that down and all of the Sabine related collections are there. That makes collection sets a very powerful thing to do, but it gets better. What if, for example, I had a whole bunch of images like this, right? Let's say I took a whole bunch of gen collections and I had them here inside of this list. Could I do the same thing? Sure. I could come over here, create a collection set and call this gen images and grab all of the gen collections and throw all the gen collections inside of there. Now, anytime that I want to see Jen, my wife, I can just twirl down here and there's all the gen pictures. Anytime I want to see Sabine, those are all of the Sabine pictures. Great way of using collection sets, but it still gets even better because not only do collection sets allow you to take these collections and make them into orders that make sense, but you could do the same thing with collection sets, right? I mean, if you take a look at these two collection sets, what does Jen and Sabine have in common? They're both my family. So what if I come over here and I create a collection set and I call it family images and I don't want to put it inside the Jen one. I'm just going to put that up here. Now I can grab the Jen images and drag it in here. I can grab the Sabine images and drag it in here. Now, anytime I want to see family pictures, go to the family images collection set. It shows me everything. Anytime I want to see pictures that are Sabine related, I go there, it shows me everything. Anytime I want to see something that's specific, I can go over here and I can see those. If I want to work on work images, I can make a collection set just called work images, twirl the family one up and start working with the ones that are work related. So this is kind of a scratching the surface for this kind of stuff. We also talk about this in the Managing a Large Lightroom Library, and we talk about this in the Collections class, but if there's one thing that I think that you should take away is the fact that they can help you a ton in the organizational process.